What is going on gamers today I'll be showing you how to make a screen for any game you play. So what you need for this is the Game Guardian app of course and the Lua editor. I'll start by showing you where to download the Lua editor. So you'll want to open up your browser and go to ronoplace.com. So open up your browser and search ronoplace.com. Soon as you've done that you'll be brought to this screen and you'll want to click on menu and click on apps. So just click on menu and click on apps. You'll be brought to this screen where you can see different apps. So I want you to click on Qlua editor and then you'll be taken to the direct download page so you'll be brought to this page and you'll click on the blue download button and click on download to begin the download immediately so as soon as you've done this you'll open the app after it's done downloading install it and you'll launch it immediately so just install the app and soon as it's done installing you'll want to launch the app so as soon as you're here we are almost done but we have to do a very important thing first so you'll want to go to settings and you'll scroll down to your apps where you can see your a full list of applications and you'll want to select the Qlua app the app that you just downloaded so you'll select it and you'll go to permissions as you can see no permissions granted so you'll just select permissions and you'll want to check the storage permissions to allow storage of the scripts so as soon as you've done this you're good to go however if you want to learn the full guide the full tutorial the full advanced scripting guide check out my ebook link in the description and without further ado let's get started so you want to launch the app and click on editor and today i want us to look at a very important part of scripting i want us to look at the input of users where you can allow the script users to input any value so i want you to type exactly as i'm typing and i'll explain as we continue so type exactly as i'm typing and you'll click on the save button so just click on save and you'll save your script with any name so save your script with any name dot lua so i'll save mine trial dot lua and you will click on the tick sign to save and now when you try to execute the script so execute and i'll go and i'll select where i saved it and when we execute it this is what we get as you can see input your value below and it has an input box where the user can input any value so since you've known how the script works now you can understand better so we'll be advancing this input to allow all types of input so first i want us to start by inputting placeholder so in case you want to notify your users the range you want the value to be in case you want to tell them the maximum and minimum, minimum as you can see i've added code there as you can see range 1 to 50 and when i execute the script again so as you can see this time we have a placeholder that tells the users the range as you can see input your value below range 1 to 50 so that can be added even more as you can see it doesn't have to be range 1 to 50 you can put a placeholder as a value so let's try a zero and when we save the script again and execute this time we get only a zero and now the user can input what they want however you notice that the script does not allow input of text so what do we do in case we want the user to input text so we add just a simple code we we'll put a comma remember everything you see here is very important don't ignore anything any uppercase letter any comma any symbol is very very important so i'll add this and this time i'll specify text as you can see i've specified text and when, when we execute the script you'll notice a difference this time we are able to input text remember the first time we had a keyboard provided by gg and we couldn't add more so this time we can add text as you can see subscribe to rono place and also if you have not subscribed make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure to turn on notifications to get notified when i upload so as you can see we can enter any text and even special characters so next i want us to see how we can input a file so in case you want your user to select a file maybe another script or any other file i'll show you how to tell them to select that and provide an option for that so i'll just change the grammar bit as you can see select your file and this time instead of text you'll go there and replace the text with file and when we save and execute as you can see select your file and there's an option to browse and as you can see the user can now select any file that you've specified or that you want them to select there you go as you can see i've selected the file so next i want us to look at what if you want your user to specify a directory maybe you want to auto 
download something or do something so you want the user to select a directory maybe to save that something or anything so this time we want to use the path as you can see select your path or directory and instead of file we'll put path and when we execute it will be a bit similar to the file but this time you can be able to select a path so as you can see we selected the etc path the root etc path and you can select any path using this so next i want us to go back to our value but this time i want to show you guys how you can allow a user to not only input a value but after inputting the value you want to search the value that the user has input so i'll go back and change the grammar a bit as you can see input your value below and i'll change the path to number so this time we are only using number however i want to search the number that the user will input so i'll add the text for gg search number so gg search number input and this input that you're seeing here you'll see the input one so that's the variable from the table the first input that the user will enter so as you can see gg search number that is, this code is going to tell the script to search the number that the user will input so now let's try this and see what happens so i'll execute the script and i'll input a value number it's supposed to search the value we input so i'll input 65 and when i click on ok as you can see it begins searching the value immediately however you have to notice that it doesn't have to be 65 it can be any value so any value that you input there the script will begin searching automatically so this is up to you and up to the user in case you want a dynamic value that's that is different from each and every user so i want us to test this in this app i'll leave a link to it in the description this is a tap counter app and every time i tap as you can see it changes on the top right screen as you can see 16 when i tap again it changes it changes it changes so i want us to execute the script and search the current value 16 so i'll input my value so i'll in input 16 and click on ok so now let's see if the script will find the value so there you go as you can see script ended and we've successfully got our value so there you go we have our value 16 so let's try this i'll add more tabs and we'll go to 27 and now first i'll delete this so i just delete this result and we we'll execute the script again and this time we we'll enter 27 and when i click on ok the script searches and there you go immediately it finds the 27 so just to be sure i'll do this one more time so i'll add the value and we'll go to 39 and when i execute the script and input 39 click on ok boom there you go again we get our value so as soon as you've understood this so i'm hoping that you're understanding everything so as soon as you've understood this we want to take this even a step further not only do we want to search for the results we want to edit those results so as soon as we've gotten the results from the tab counter app we want to edit those results so as you can see i'll add a simple code remember gg get results to select the results we want to edit so we want to edit about 10 results in case we get even more in the search and we'll edit all to a billion so gg edit all and remember to specify your data type so type b word now let's text let's test this code when i execute the script so remember to remove the results and when i execute the script this time i'll input 39 so execute let's input 39 remember this script is not only supposed to search it should also edit so that is searching and now boom there you go as you can see it has searched from 39 and it's edited all to a billion now when we tap there you go we get a billion tabs that means it works successfully now let's try to do this in reverse let's take it back to 20 so right now we have about a billion plus tabs so let's try to get this back to 20 so i'll delete as you notice i've edited the script just to do this so this time instead of 20 we we'll input a billion and one exactly as it appears in the app and when i click on ok the search begins automatically and boom there you go we found the billion and we changed it to 20 so now let's tap to see if it really works and there you go guys it works and it's so beautiful so as you can see it works so next i want us to look at something very important when your user cancels the script so instead of clicking on, on ok the script will draw an error and this is because 
as you can see, attempt to index a nil value. So I'll show you how to avoid this error and how to remove this error. We'll add a code to check this and you'll want to type exactly as I'm typing. As you can see, if input is nil, that means that nothing has been entered by the user and the variable is just nil. So we'll input a simple alert to let the user that we know they've cancelled. So as you can see, if input is nil, GG alert. So this is the alert that the user will get. You have cancelled the dialogue and we want to exit the script so it does not continue to the rest of the part because it will draw even more errors. Now we'll save and execute the script and again this time let's cancel and see what happens. When we cancel as you can see you have cancelled the dialogue and when we click on OK the script exits immediately. So this is good because now you won't have any errors. Also remember guys this is just an introduction and just a part of scripting. If you want the full guide check out my ebook link in the description. And that's it for today guys and until next time.